Under the security and performance tab of the SEO checklist, we're going to scroll down to the two items referring to the advanced CSS slash JS aggregation module. You can find this at drupal.org slash project slash advag. And this module, advanced CSS JS aggregation, is also known as advag for short. This module does a lot of different things to help speed up the delivery and the loading of resource files on your website. When we say resource files in web development, if you're not familiar with that term, that usually primarily refers to CSS files and JavaScript files, your style sheets and your scripts. These are files that are doing things that affect the way your pages look and in some cases act. So go ahead and download this module, put it on your site, and we will enable it together and talk about it a little bit. So once you have AdVag downloaded, you can find it in the advanced CSS slash JS aggregation tab on your modules page. And we're going to install almost everything here. We're going to go with AdVag Bundler, AdVag CDN, AdVag CSS JS Validator. We're going to skip external minifications. We're going to skip external minification. To use this, you also have to install a command line tool that does stuff. This can be really useful, but it's a bit more advanced and it's not entirely necessary. We're, we're going to be able to minify our files in other ways. We're going to enable everything else here. Minify CSS, minify JavaScript, AdVag modifier, and finally advanced CSS JS aggregation, which is the uh, sort of the root module of all of these. Once you have these selected, as always, click install. So we can type Alt D and type in AdVag and go to it from here. Or we can go to Configuration, Development, Performance, AdVag. And here is where we're going to start configuring AdVag. And you see we have a lot of sort of subtabs here that we're going to have to cover. It's not going to take as long as it might look, but it does take a little bit of work here. For global options, you just want to leave these the same. This very top one essentially enables and disables the module. So obviously we want that checked. And in fact, you can use DNS prefetch for external CSS and JSS, uh, for external CSS and JS. Sometimes, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what this does, but sometimes this can have unwanted effects on your site where it's loading things that you don't necessarily need loaded. I typically use this unchecked unless I know specifically that I'm going to be needing it. Down here we get to AdVag Cache Settings, and this is really where we first start doing real configuration of this module. Now, currently, on the Drupal 8 version of this module, you'll see there's no performance data yet. We can cache our resource files. Normal, we can have high caching, and we can have very aggressive caching. Now, it says that you probably want to use normal, and it doesn't give us any specifics, really, on what these different caching methods entail. All we know that aggressive is going to try to cache a whole lot more stuff. Normal is going to try to cache a little bit less stuff. And if you choose development, then that probably means it's caching very little. We're just going to go with normal here and trust this message here from AdVag and say, normal's probably good enough. We could try high if we want. I probably would not try aggressive. But if you do want to try high caching, you can do that. And then if you start to see some problems on our on your site, then just sort of back off and go to normal. Now under CSS options, we're going to check everything here. The first of these is combine CSS files by using media queries. Now with some of Drupal's CSS files, it takes a look at certain information from the browser and then goes and pulls whatever CSS files it thinks it needs for that browser. But what we can do here, in order to avoid multiple files that may be used on one page, we can combine them. AdVag will use media queries to determine what files are needed on a page and combine those all together so that they load faster. Then we have prevent more than 4,095 CSS selectors in an aggregated CSS file. This may sound kind of silly and arbitrary, and in a way it sort of is, but this now this depends on whether you need backwards compatibility with older versions of Internet Explorer. Essentially, anything before Internet Explorer 10. 
with Internet Explorer 9 and everything before, there's this weird problem it has where it really doesn't like you to have more than 4,095 selectors in any given CSS file. If you check this, it'll make sure that it aggregates your files such that none of them ever have more than 4,095 CSS selectors. Now, if you're purely going for performance and you really don't think you're going to have to support any of these older versions of Internet Explorer, then feel free to leave this unchecked. But just know that if someone is using an older version of that browser to view your site, they're probably going to come across problems if you end up with any CSS files that have been combined and then end up having more than this number of selectors. I usually keep this checked. Fix improperly set type here and under JS options. It has a little description that explains this, but basically it makes sure that you are linking to your resource files in the appropriate way. And if you're not, it fixes that for you. I like it when modules fix my mistakes for me, so I keep these checked. Click Save Configuration. Now, next we have information here, and we're not really going to use this. This is primarily, as it says, this is debugging information. So if you are using this module and you're coming across problems, you can use this page to try to figure out what's going on. That's what all this is for. If we click Operations, that's kind of similar. There's not really any configuration we want to do here. This is, again, typically for during development, if you want to flush your site's cache or flush the modules cache the files that the module has cached on its own you can just click this flush advag cache button to try to figure out what's going on and if you have to take drastic measures for whatever reason you can tell it from here to cache all files and file inf information remove all generated files typically as it says here you're not ever going to need to use these but just know that if you're debugging stuff and you're having a really hard time figuring it out you can go here to sort of nuke everything to try to figure that out. Bundler is where we're going to start having some more configuration. You want to make sure that Bundler is active. The Bundler analyzes your website, particularly the different types of pages, the different types of content that are on your site that load different resources, and it looks also at the caches for those pages. Then it tries to break up those caches into multiple files to make them smaller overall. So for example, imagine you have one type of page that uses a whole bunch of CSS and maybe it combines, maybe AdVag is combining three different style sheets all into one to load this type of page. But then, then you have another content type somewhere else and it only has to use maybe two of those files. What Bundler will do is it will make different versions of style sheets, one for one content type, one for another or one for one type of page, whatever the case may be, so that for pages that need less CSS or JavaScript, it's not loading lots of code that the browser isn't actually going to use. Now, this does create more files for visitors on your site to have to download, or for their browser, rather, to have to download as they're visiting the site. But overall, it does help because there are less bytes transmitted to the browser so after they've been browsing your site, they're going to start getting more efficient versions of the resource files for the pages that they're looking at. So typically you want to keep Bundler active. And you usually want to just stick with the default number of CSS bundles per page. Try to keep it down to four. Again, this is a target number. In some cases, it may need to do something a little bit different. And we're going to stick with file count for the grouping logic. And we're going to do the same thing with JavaScript here. Try to keep these to four files per page and we're going to base the grouping on file count. We haven't made any changes here, but I'll click Save Configuration just to be safe, and then we'll go over to CDN.